Number 25. Hoover Dam on the Colorado River is the highest dam in the United States at 221 meters with an output of 1300 megawatts. The dam generates electricity with water taken from a depth of 150 meters and an average flow rate of 650 cubic meters per second. Letter A, calculate the power in this flow. All right, um, so here we go, right? Here is basically the, the height of the uh, dam, okay? Or the height of the water, at least. And um, the water is basically going to exit out of a hole in the bottom. All right, it has a certain flow rate down here. And what we need to do is we have to figure out uh, or calculate the power of this particular flow at the bottom. So let's start with the idea of power. So power is equal to change in energy over change in time. Now, what are the units for energy? Joule, right? So in other words, power in terms of a, from a unit's perspective, the power is a joule per second, okay? Now, what's a joule or what's energy, right? How can we come up with a formula for joule or for energy? Well, let's see. Uh, what's a formula for energy that you know? You can, there's a bunch of them that you can choose. Uh, an easy one might be to think of like work, okay? So an easy one might be to say that, you know, work is a form of energy and that's equal to force multiplied by distance. Okay, great. Um, and then we might say, well, what is a force? Well, force is just mass times acceleration, right? It's, I know it's a Newton, but I'm trying to get it down into uh, standard units. So the work or energy that is, would be equal to mass times acceleration. So this is kilogram times meter per second squared, right? This is the mass multiplied by an acceleration value, then multiplied by a distance value, which is m. So if you notice here, the work or energy will be kilogram square meter per square centimeter. So in other words here, let's take a look, right? So in other words, this is what a joule is. Okay, you could have also found it from what might have been easier, uh, like in your potential energy formula, right? Mass times gravity times height. You could have also found it that, that way as well. You would have come to the same conclusion. In any case, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these standard units and plug it in for the joule value because what I just found is equivalent to joules in the standard unit. So this is now kilogram, right? Meter squared per second squared, then divided by seconds. So if you think about, you know, trying to figure out, combine this, right, we have essentially a fraction divided by another number. We can say that it's this fraction then multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator, right? So I can reformat this and just have it be, and I forgot the G in here, right? Kilogram meter square per second square times now one over S. And look, so power has the units of kilogram meter squared per second cubed. These are the units for power, okay? Now, let's take a look at the relationship between power and pressure, all right? So what is pressure? Well, pressure, right? So uh, I'll, it might get a little confusing because they, they both have P as their variable. Uh, but this one, this P in, in yellow will represent pressure. So remember that pressure is equivalent to force divided by area, okay? Remember now that uh, force is a Newton and we found that before over here, right? Kilogram meter per second squared. So I can plug that in. So kilogram meter per second squared. And then the area is a cubic, uh, excuse me, it's a square meter value, right? So divided by square meters. Combining this, I'm gonna do the same thing, uh, multiplying the numerator fraction by the reciprocal of the denominator. So now this is telling us that the pressure will be equal to kilogram times meter per second squared times now one over meter squared. And what does this work out to be? Well, this simply works out to be kilogram, oops, kilogram uh, per second squared times meter, right? So these are, or this will be the units for uh, pressure, okay? So now, where can we, so now how, where do we take it from here now? Well, what I now need to do is I now need to figure out a way to format these two in terms of their equivalence. What I'm trying to say is I'm trying to figure out how pressure here is equivalent to power. So let's see. Let's start with the pressure units. I'm gonna write it on the 
uh, upper left now, okay? So in the upper left here, let's start with the pressure unit. So here we have kilogram uh, over second squared times meter. And this house, we'll probably have to multiply this by something, all right? And this will, let me just move this over. Let me give myself a little more space. We'll probably multiply this thing by something. And somehow this has to equal now the power value of kilogram meter squared per second cubed. What can I plug in here to make this true? What can I plug in here to make this statement true? Well, I already got my kilogram, right? So that's fine. I notice I have meters down here and then I'm ending with square meters on the top. So it sounds to me like I have to have a meter cubed value up here, right? Because if you plug in meter cubed here and this is a meter on the bottom, this meter cancels, that one will be reduced to a two and that's how we arrive at the meter squared. Okay, so that's cool. So now I got my kilogram and then combining these meter values that will give me my numerator value. And I now realize I have seconds squared and here's seconds cubed. So I need some, what do I put here? Well, another second, right? Second squared times seconds is now seconds cubed. And if you notice, all of this will now work out beautifully. Now, what did I just show you? I just showed you that the units for pressure or a pressure times a volume flow rate. Look at this, volume per time. Look at the formula over here on the right-hand side, volume per time, cubic meter per second. So multiplied by your value of Q will equal now, will equal power. That's just what I proved to you here, okay? So this is now just my overall value, okay? Now, that being the case, so let's erase all this work. All right, that being the case now. One second. Okay. So this being the case that we have the pressure multiplied by the volume flow rate will give us the power. So basically I have the volume flow rate, here it is. In order for me to find the power generated, I need to know the pressure. So I need to know the pressure of this particular water at the bottom, okay? So let's not overthink this too much. Now, if you notice, there's a similarity between this formula and what I have over here, okay? That everything inside of this parenthesis is basically units for pressure. Uh, but I'm not gonna, I, I think this will complicate the matter. Let's just look at it. I, th I think if we just keep this general idea in mind, the problem will be simple. So what is the pressure down here at the bottom? Think back to the last chapter. How do you find the pressure at the bottom of a column of water? Do you remember this formula where pressure is equal to rho GH, right? Density times gravity times height. Well, that's what we need here. This is the units for pressure, or I should say not units. This is the formula for pressure that we need. So what I can do here is I can substitute now this on into my equation for pressure because the only thing that's providing the pressure down here at the point at which the um, water starts flowing is essentially the weight the force, I should say, that's that's producing the pressure down here is going to be basically the weight of that column, all right? So in other words now, what I'm going to write now is I'm going to write the density. Now we're talking about water, so density of the water multiplied by gravity multiplied by the height of that water times then our Q value will give us the power. This is it. This is all we need to do now. So the density of the water is 1,000 because it's fresh water. Gravity is 9.8. The height of the water is 150, my volume flow rate is 650, and voila, here's the power. Okay, plug it all in. So we get 1,000 times 9.8 times 150 times 650. And we get a value of about 9 points of so power will be equal to 9.55 or 56 times 10 raised to the, what do we have here? 3, 6, 7, 8. Looks like times 10 raised to the 8. Okay, and power has the units as we just, just described, kilogram, meter squared per uh, second cubed, or aka watts. Okay, now this is the amount of watts. So this is the answer for letter A. Now, um, 
for letter B now, they're saying, what is the ratio of this power to the facility's average of 680 megawatts? So the only, so whenever they're asking us to calculate a ratio, right, they just mean basically find the fraction. So what I need to do is uh, either one of two things, either I convert this into megawatts or I convert this into kilo, uh, into watts. It doesn't matter. Whichever way you do it, it, it's fine. And again, I'm giving the answer here in watts. You might need it in megawatts. It doesn't ask specifically what you know, unit they wanted in. So this is a valid answer. Um, so now what we need to do is, like I said, do one of those conversions. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll convert, um, uh, doesn't matter, I'm going to convert this into watts, okay? Remember that for every, uh, for every base unit, for every watt, there will be 1 times 10 to the 6 megawatts, okay? So in other words, this is my conversion now. It's the 9.56 times 10 to the 8 divided then by 680 multiplied by 10 raised to the 6th because this will be the conversion of how to get you from megawatts to watts. So both of these values are now in terms of watts. Look, they cancel and now we're just going to get a ratio, a fractional answer without any units. That's what we would expect. Okay. And since, you know, the way the ratio is phrased, we're going to take this value out of the total. Okay. So... Take that answer, divide it now by 680 times 10 raised to the 6th, and what do we get? We get about 1.41, I guess, all right? That will be the uh, ratio, that it is, that this power is, is in relationship to the uh, facility's average. So it tells you that this power is more than average, right? Because the ratio is greater than 1. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time.